Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for joining us. But we're excited. We've got some really great stuff to share with you today from the last quarter in case you've missed it. Some ways to make your lives easier. So this is a new series uh, from the Script Runner team. Uh, we're calling it the quarterly product update. Bet you can't guess why. Um, so as I mentioned, we are rounding up the very best of the stuff that you might have missed. We've also got some sneaky peeks of things that are in development uh, currently or about to drop. So you are getting the best of what has been and the best of what is to come. I think first up, we have the biggest news of our show. It made sense to start with the headliner, right? It, we're doing it backwards. This is not a rock concert. We're going to start with our biggest news. And I'm going to hand you over to Seb, who has some exciting stuff from Script Runner for Confluence. Thank you very much, Jess. Uh, so yeah, hi everyone. My name is Seb. I'm the product marketing team lead for the Script Runner team. I'm actually stepping in for our product marketing manager for Script Runner for Confluence Data Center, Nitin, who unfortunately couldn't make it today. So I will give it my best shot. But we are here to talk about uh, one of the biggest uh, Script Runner innovations of recent times, which is Happy. Uh, so we actually launched Happy um, about a year ago on Script Runner for Jira Data Center. So Happy is Happy is our managed API, or intuitive managed API that we built around uh, typical use cases for, for Jira and Confluence. And the whole point of, uh, of this innovation was to make it as easy as possible to write scripts using Script Runner. Uh, so with Happy, uh, scripts become easier to, to read uh, because the methods that we've chosen for Happy, the naming is as close as possible to, uh, to natural language. But not only easier to read, uh, scripts are also easier to write because we also have an autocomplete function, which basically prompts the next uh, methods and parameter names that you use. Uh, so regardless of your level of expertise, whether you're a, an, an expert scripter or whether you're a beginner, basically just things get easier across the board. So to, uh, to, to demonstrate that a little bit, here is an example of a pretty simple use case where we're basically creating a new issue in Jira. So on the left, you have the, the standard way that we've been doing it all these years using um, the Groovy code. And then on the right, you have the exact same outcome implemented, the, the issue created in Jira, but this time using the, the Happy Managed API. So as you can see, it's not just reducing it a little bit or making it a, you know, a tad easier. It's, it's a pretty significant change, um, a lot less line of codes to achieve exactly the same impact. And, um, as of November last year, we actually also have Happy in Script Runner for Confluence data center as well. Uh, so we already have uh, lots of customers who are already getting value out of it. So if you are not one of them, uh, basically what Happy means uh, for Confluence admins is that uh, writing script is now quicker. Uh, it's a much nicer user experience and it's just a whole lot easier in general. So it's quicker because you can get exactly the same outcomes as before, but using a lot fewer uh, lines of code. It's a better user experience because you're no longer having to context switch out to refer to API docs or, or, or third-party sources. Happy, um, Happy serves up everything that you need directly within the code editor. So much less um, yeah, much less context switching between different, uh, different apps. Um, and easier because it's just so much more intuitive. You no longer have to be a, a master uh, at Groovy in order to um, create the automations and the scripts that uh, implement your uh, your business requirements. So uh, yeah, once again, whatever the skill skill level, there's there's something for everyone. It's going to make everyone's lives easier. So uh, rather than just um, promote it, we actually wanted to show you. So I am going to attempt to uh, a live demo. Uh, we're going to try a scenario to start off with. A pretty typical scenario that um, Confluence administrators often want to, to, to implement. Uh, users who haven't um, signed in for, for 90 days, we're going to create an automation that's going to deactivate them uh, automatically. And we want that check to happen uh, once a week. So just a sneak peek and also my backup if this, uh, if this doesn't go to plan. Uh, on the left here is the, the script that we would normally use before Happy, so the Groovy script. And then here on the right is the is the happy version. So again, you can see um, a lot more concise for exactly the same outcome. But uh, but let's try it. Let's give it a go. So uh, if I go the right way, here we go. So this is um, this is our Confluence instance, our, our our demonstration instance. It's got a few users set up. And uh, so just to recap, we want to automatically uh, deactivate the ones that haven't signed in for ninety days, which is actually these first two. 
So uh, we're using Script Runner. So our first uh, first thing to do is to go to the to the scheduled jobs, uh, which I've got open here, and we would create a new job of uh, well, it's a custom scheduled job, right? We're going to write our own script. So we would give our script a name, such as deactivate old users. Uh, we might want to run this uh, as my good self. And we said we were going to run the check uh, once a week. So let's just go with run on Saturday nights. Now, I'm not going to attempt to rewrite that, uh, that script. I do have it conveniently saved in my, in my clipboard here. But uh, you know, you, when, when we go through this, you can see it's pretty standard. So we've got all of our imports at the top. Uh, we're having to use the, the component locator. We're defining a group of, uh, of inactive users. We're having to identify the ones that are active. We've then got some logic that's looking at the login history. And then finally, at the bottom here, we're actually deactivating the ones that uh, that have been identified. So, OK, not a, not a hugely complex script, but still 50, 50, 55 or so lines of code to, uh, to implement our use case here. So let's try and do this um, with happy instead. So just for simplicity, I will go to the script console. It's just uh, ever so slightly easier. And I hope you'll forgive me. I'm going to cheat ever so slightly and paste in the uh, the imports that we're going to need um, up there. But right, let's give this a go. So we want to uh, we want to operate uh, on some users, and we basically want to start by identifying the users that are inactive. So you can see Happy providing the autocomplete here. So we want to get inactive users, um, and sure enough, it helps if I put users. So sure enough. Uh, ooh, Get inactive. There we go. Um, it's not being good to me because I can't type, but there we go. Get inactive users. It helps if I can type. Uh, so now Happy is prompting us uh, to say, okay, get, get inactive users. That's cool, but we need a, a duration. So let's go with that. So duration dot of. And that's when we're going to say, okay, well, we'd said 90 days, right? And that's where our chrono unit comes in. We just needed to specify that we're talking about days. OK, so for each of those, uh, each of those users, we want to do what? We want to uh, we want to deactivate them. So let's see if we can locate that, deactivate. As you can see, it's all very intuitive. Um, you basically type what you want to do. And if I've done it right, uh, when we run this, we should find that our two users that we identified earlier will now be deactivated. So if I go back to the users here, I'm going to hit refresh. Uh, of course, it does that. And I'm just going to re-log in. Here we go. Um, and here we go. So those first two uh, that we identified earlier have been disabled. So you can see how we've basically gone from 55 lines of Groovy to five or six or however many it was uh, using Happy. So big difference. Um, we've got a little bit of time still, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to run through another example. So this time we're going to use Happy to uh, manipulate some labels on a page. And here is said page, our beautiful welcome to Confluence page. And importantly, we've got two labels here at the bottom. We've got new, and we've got happy. So we'll just do this in the in the console um, again, just for simplicity. Let's see how we can use Happy to uh, manipulate those labels. So the first thing we want to do is identify which page we want to change the labels on. So I'm going to go with something like pages. Um, and I want to search or find the page that I, uh, that, I that we just looked at. So I'm going to go with search that it's, pro it's uh, prompting me here. Uh, it's telling me we need some, some CQL in here, which is uh, absolutely fair enough. So let's try and type this one out right this time. So first of all, we want to tell it the space, which is DS. Uh, and we also want to find our very specific page, which was uh, welcome to Confluence. So let's get the quote marked right. Welcome to Confluence. Hopefully I've spelt that right. I'm going to be good. Right. So assuming we found that one, uh, there should only be one matching. But for each one of those, uh, so for each page, uh, we want to... So let's see what we can do. We've got our page. So page, we want to add label, right? So let's try add. What's it telling us? What we've we got? Uh, add labels. That looks like uh, the one we want to start with. So let's add two labels. We'll add label. Let's add label two. And let's add 
label three. Okay. So if I've done that right, let's see how that goes. Okay, no errors. That looks promising. Right, so this is how it was. We had new and happy. Let's refresh that. Okay, now we've now got label two and label three, which we had just added using happy. You saw how easy that was to, to write that script. So let's try something else. So we've added some labels. Let's say that this time we want to uh, replace label. So it's another sort of pretty common use case. So let's go back to where we were, page, what can we do? So we want to replace, let's see what have we got with replace. We've got replace label, perfect. So um, again, very intuitive. We want to replace something from to something. So we're just going to go with from, uh, which one shall we replace? Well, I don't even have to go back to remind myself what we created because uh, happy is going to prompt me here. So let's take label three, let's change label three and let's make that label four. These are all very uninspiring <laughs> examples, but let's see if that works. So, right, let's go back to our space. We've got label two and three, and if I've done it right, that should go to four. Excellent, it's gone to four. All right, so we've probably got time for just one really quick last example. Let's go back to our console and let's say that we've finished playing around with this now and actually we just want to clean it up and we want to remove all of these labels that we've created. So what have we got? We're going to remove label two. It's given it to me. Great. And we also want to remove the other one that we created, which was label four. Uh, so let's hit run. And let's go back and you should see these go to new and happy, which is what we started off with. Here we go. Cool. So that concludes the uh, the live demo part of this part of the presentation. So uh, as we said at the start, this functionality is very much live, both in Script Runner for Jira DC and Script Runner for Confluence DC. So customers are already uh, reaping the benefits of this one. If that's something that you would like to also try out, then um, you will need the uh, the correct versions of Jira and Confluence. So for Jira, you want 8.0.0. For Confluence, you are looking at 8.8.1. As long as you're on those versions, you should be able to get started with Happy and uh, also uh, benefit from much, much easier scripting. Um, and then the last bit from me before I hand over is uh, some news that we will also be rolling out. Uh, we will also be rolling out Happy for uh, Script Runner for Jira Cloud very soon. So please do watch this space. And Jess, I think I will hand it back to you. Thanks, Seb. I have to say I'm really impressed. We had three live demos there and one typo. So you obviously did your sacrifices to the demo gods this morning. I'll just share my screen again and we can get cracking with the next update, which I think is also uh, for Jira Cloud. So let us go. Uh, Reese, I think we are passing over to you. Yes, thanks, Jess. Um, and yes, Seb, well done. That was very good. Um, so yeah, hey, I'm Reese. I'm the product marketer for Enhanced Search team. Um, just wanted to do a quick introduction of children of and parents of the new functions. Um, so yeah, next slide, Jess. So it was highly anticipated, this release. Um, there was lots of requests from yourself. So obviously, we're, we're very thankful for that. Um, and obviously, if you have any future requests, you can put them into the note board. I can share that link uh, very soon. Um, children of. So this was an entirely new function. It existed on prem, but now we have it in the cloud. Um, it aims to find issues that are children, grandchildren, or descendant, descendants of the specified subquery. Parents of, we actually had this function previously, so it's just been upgraded, but it's been upgraded quite a lot. Um, it previously only retrieved parent issues of subtasks, um, whereas the new version will get you that, grandparent and ancestor issues of the provided subquery. There's also a few pieces of content that we did create for this release. So there's a blog post, which Lisa's shared in the chat, um, two YouTube demonstration videos, um, and all of these, uh, all of these videos and other information appears in the documentation. Um, so please go and check that out if you have time. Thanks for listening for my quick intro. Um, I'm going to hand over to Jasmine, one of our engineers, who's actually recorded a demonstration of these functions. So, yeah, hope you enjoy. Hi, my name is Jasmine, and I'm a software engineer on the Enhanced Search team. Today, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can use our new Children of function. 
and also how you can use our existing parent sub function with the new extended functionality. So on the screen you can see a project called phase one and this is the project that we're going to be using to search for issues within. It has a couple of different issue types so we have epics in here, stories and subtasks. I'm going to head to the enhanced search app so I can show you first of all parents of. Okay so I'm going to use the insert function dialog box to add the parents of function. So first I'll show you the existing functionality so how it works previously. So project and then I'm going to use the project key and resolution is empty. So this is our JQL subquery. Okay, so I'm going to press add to query and then I'm going to search using that parents of function. So what you can see here is the parent issues of subtasks being returned. So this is how our parents of function works normally. Okay, so we've got three issues returned. We've got two stories and one bug. Okay, so if we want to use the new extended functionality, we need to add a second argument. So here, if we open the insert function dialog box again, you can see there's an option to add a parent level of all. And if we add that, it will add a second argument to our function. So instead of adding that there, I'm just going to manually add this to the function. Okay, so if I press search, you'll see that we have some more issues being returned. So what this does is this will return the parents of issues of any type rather than parents of subtasks. Okay, so now we're getting some epic issues returned which are parents of the stories and bugs listed here. Okay, so if you wanted to narrow down the issues being returned here by the parents of function, we could also specify the type of issue you want returned. So for example, if I just wanted to get the parents of um, that are of type epic, I can add this to the end of my query, press search, and you can just see that then we're getting the epics returned. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to show you the children of function. So again, I'm going to use our insert function dialog box. Um, and here for the children of function, there's only one argument needed, and that is the JQL subquery because by default children of will return the descendant issues of the subquery when the issues are of any types okay so I'm going to use the same jql query project is p1 and resolution is empty and I'm going to press add to query okay and then press search and what you can see now is we're getting the children of issues returned by the subquery so again, as I just said, these will be children issues of any type. So what we can do again is if we want to specify the type of issues being returned, we could also add that type is bug. Press search and we can narrow that type down. Okay. Could also do story. And this is how you can use our children of function. Thank you. Amazing. That is going to save a lot of product managers a lot of time. Hi, my name is Jasmine. Let's move on. We're going to keep it on Jira Cloud, um, but we have some exciting news about scripted fields. They've had a little bit of a, a glow up. I think, Maria, you're going to talk us through this one. That's right. Thank you, Jess. Um, so uh, I'm Maria. I'm the product marketing manager for Scoop Runner for Jira Cloud. And uh, yeah, today uh, we'd like to introduce you to the latest upgrade on scripted fields. Um, now you can search, filter and position them like you would any other Jira custom field. But uh, before we get into the upgrade itself, uh, next slide, please. Uh, we would like to recap slightly uh, and tell you what scripted fields actually are. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, so scripted uh, fields uh, in Script Runner for Jira Cloud uh, enable you to customize how the information for an issue is displayed. And you use them to calculate or amalgamate any type of data that you have on your project uh, from one or more existing fields. And in here we have actually used um, a screenshot where we're dragging 
a scripted field into our issue layout that I'll, you'll see in a minute. So um, if we go into the next slide, um, here is like a brief summary of what have actually changed. So before uh, you were, you would uh, create your scripted fields and save them on script runner. Uh, they were not visible on search uh, really. Um, you couldn't access them and pull them into any dashboards of your choice and you didn't have any type of placement freedom because there was no flexibility to move them around um, your configuration screen. However, now when a scripted field is created, we'll also create a corresponding custom field in your Jira Cloud instance enabling you to configure that field anywhere within Jira configurations, just as you would with any other custom field. And this will uh, obviously empower you with uh, a better display because you'll be spending less time uh, searching. And instead you can elevate the usability of your Jira instance uh, with columns that are especially dedicated to your scripted fields and their data in your search in your search results. Sorry, uh, you'll also enjoy increased flexibility because you'll be able to move your scripted fields anywhere on a screen, and increase visibility as well because this update uh, makes your scripted fields more accessible and discoverable for you and your team. So if we go into the next slide. Um, uh, we have a little bit um, Okay, so in order to show you uh, some of the benefits uh, we've just spoken about, we're going to start by creating a scripted field. We're going to be calling this a scripted field warning one, and we're going to write test as a description. Uh, this is going to be a rich text uh, field, which um, essentially will display an enhanced uh, visualization of our field through HTML. And for the sake of time, I'm going to be pasting a script I have been working on um, here instead of typing it live. So what this script will do is to showcase on the issues of my project a banner um, that can, that will be either red or green with a sad or um, a smiley emoji, respectively, depending on the amount of time this issue uh, is gonna uh, has been on that same status. So if the issue has been there for over five days on that same status, uh, the banner will be red with a sad face. And if it has been there for less than five days, it will be green with a smiley face. Um, so although with this new upgrade, it's not necessary to test uh, your script against an issue anymore in order to save it, it is recommended to do so in case there are any errors. So we're going to do that uh, right now. Test it. Great, it seems to be working. So we're gonna to proceed to save it. And now our um, scripted field and custom field have been created. Uh, so we're gonna head over to our projects, project settings and issue layout. Uh, what we want to do uh, here is to place our uh, recently created scripted field into our issue layout. And um, as I mentioned before, as part of this new upgrade, when we add a, a scripted field here, we can we can place it anywhere on the on the issue screen. So we're gonna drag it and place it right on top of the description as this is something um, kind of showcasing critical information and save the changes. Great. So before we go back uh, to our project, uh, in order to get the rich text to display properly, uh, we're gonna head over to, again, to the project settings and to issue fields and make sure that our field is configured, the render of the field is configured 
as a wiki style one. So we're going to search it. Here it is, and we're going to make sure that we update the renderer. It should be wiki style render, I would say. And update it. Great. So now that has been updated, we can head over our board and see if our scripted field is actually working. It should take a few seconds to update, but it should show in a moment right here. Uh, awesome. So that has been, this issue has been in the backlog for five days, 23 hours and 30 minutes. So uh, the, the banner is red with the sad face. Um, let's try for our two other issues. So if we open this one, it should update as well. The number of time it's been there. Uh, similarly, yes, that is correct. So in progress, and it has been there for five days, 23 hours and 30 minutes. And last but not least, we have this other issue in progress. And yeah, this is the one that we tested against. It's been there for two hours and 59 minutes. So we can see the banner is uh, kind of like a greenish color and it has a, a happy face. Great, so that's working fine. Um, now um, to showcase the searching uh, capabilities, as we, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, now you can uh, search your scripted fields by a scripted field name, as opposed to a scripted field term, which is what um, uh, the way it was before. So if we search for our warning uh, scripted field for the issues where that field is not empty, we should return our three issues that we just saw. Um, and um, also, you should be able to add it as a column. Uh, I've done this previously, but you essentially search it here and select it. Uh, to see the, the scripted field as a column. You can also choose to export this page um, and the export in uh, CSV, XML, or any other format should show this information as well. Uh, last but not least, you can now add your uh, scripted fields on your um, dashboards. So, I'm choosing this default dashboard as an example. Um, I have clicked on edit. And now if you take any widget and decide to configure it, like this one here, and search for your scripted field, and save the results, it should come back exactly like that with uh, a column showcasing the, the context of the scripted field. Um, this is just another from another project, so that's why the, the, it's not showing. Uh, so that would be it. Thank you very much for uh, listening. And if you have any further questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to our uh, team or raise a support ticket with us. Thank you. Amazing. Uh, Maria, recorded Maria, interrupted live Maria. Was there anything you wanted to say to round this up? I, I don't think so. I think that was that was fine. Yeah, we're perfect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the demo. I need to go and decide what emojis I want to use on uh, all of my team's Jira tickets now. Uh, so there's a lot going on on cloud. I suggest we take a little detour over to data center and see what's happening over there. Verity, please have some stuff for us. Hi, thank you, Jess. Um, I'm Verity. I'm Senior Product Marketing Manager, and I wanted to share some exciting enhancements coming up for Script Runner for Jira Data Center, um, starting with our Fragments feature, which is getting a makeover. Uh, next slide, please. Great, thank you. So we've been looking at some of the features that need a bit of love. 
And last year, we spoke to some of our customers to find out where their pain points were. Uh, and one feature that didn't test as well was fragments. Um, for those who aren't familiar with fragments, um, it's a really useful feature that enables you to customize the Jira UI to exactly how you need it through dynamically adding uh, web fragments, including screens, dialogues, menus, and more to better suit your admin specific needs and enhance the usability of Jira. But from the feedback received, um, the feature didn't seem to be, the feature seemed to be difficult to understand and the terminology was confusing. Uh, with the journey to create a fragment actually taking longer than it needed to. So in short, we've already solved some of these problems. And if you're on the latest release um, of Script and Fajira Data Center, you may have already seen some of these improvements. And these include, so you can now enable and disable the fragments locator from within a script fragment. Um, and we've made the fragment locator easy to use by making it a toggle, um, adding it on the overview page um, and within the fragment configuration forms. And we've also created a duplicate fragment feature, which is going to be really useful for you, allowing you to copy and edit a fragment that you want to make some changes to. So what are we working on next? Well, coming in release very soon will be, be, will be the ability to create a fragment directly from the location itself. And this saves four clicks and we want to save you as much time as possible. Um, and if that isn't enough, our documentation gurus um, have overhauled our fragment uh, section within Documentation Center, um, just making it easier for you to understand and follow through uh, creating those fragments. Um, and longer term, planned in the summer, we'll be launching a new simple uh, wizard to set up a fragment and shortcuts to set up popular customizations. And this, and this wizard will be a, a virtual wizard that walks you through um, setting up the journey to create the fragment. And you won't even need to turn on the fragments locator to use it. Um, so that's really exciting that's coming. And thank you to some of our customers who've been user testing that feature. So watch this space. Next slide, please. Great, thank you. Well, you may have heard the exciting news from a recent update that hundreds of example scripts are now available in app, and that's across all our data center products. So let's dive into that a bit more. Next slide, please. Thank you. So scripts from library.adaptivist.com have been integrated directly into all script runner data center apps. And that means it's now only even easier for you to find the script examples you need, both basic scripts, uh, which are formerly called snippets, and the advanced scripts, which are sourced directly from the Adaptivist Library website. And don't worry, the library website's not going anywhere. It just means it's easier for you to access it in app now. So that means no more content switching, saving you time, um, and helping you exactly access those example scripts, like I said, without leaving the app. Um, and help you get the script inspiration um, when you need it and achieve more in Script Runner, which is what we're always striving to help you achieve. Um, and if, you do, if you've used an app library, we'd love to hear your thoughts. So please do share any feedback. And we're also actively adding more example scripts so you can access uh, all the scripts you need in app. So let's take a look at what it looks like. And I am going to do a live demo. So here we go. Let's just share my screen. Hope you've said all your prayers and uh I have. I am <laughs> holding my breath. No, I'm not. Don't worry. Uh, OK, so here we are. We're in the script console, which I'm sure you're very familiar with. Um, and here is the uh, example scripts button that I was talking about. So let's click on that. Perfect. So here we are in app library. So on the left hand side, you'll see, as I mentioned, those basic script examples. They're the formerly known snippets. They'll be at the top. And then as you scroll down, you'll see the um, library scripts that have been pulled through directly from Adaptivist Library. Um, so you can either scroll through all of these or let's just save some time and search for exactly what you're looking for. So let's say you're looking for custom field. There we go. So this is bringing me all these scripts that we have available around custom fields. OK, so let's look at the top one. Restrict the administration of custom fields. There we go. And voila, this will tell you description of the um, of the script and it also tell you minimum version supported. So what Jira version needs to be on and the version of script for Jira on premise it's available with. It'll give you an overview uh, of what the uh, script can do and a use case example. So that's really helpful. So like, where can I use this script and how can I use it? And some good to knows as well. And there we go. There's your script. And then you can copy that and then use that wherever you need it. There we go, I'm gonna close that. 
So what we've also made helpful is that whatever feature you're in, so whether you're in listeners or behaviors, you'll get those script examples that, that they're already be pre-populated. So you'll only get scripts that are compatible with listeners in the listeners feature. So that also is making it much easier for you to access those example scripts when you need them. So that's it. Thank you. Back to you, Jess. Lots of great ways to get started scripting here. Uh, we're really trying to make scripting um, as easy as possible, as hopefully you're spotting with all the, uh, the changes that we're making to the product and the new innovations that are coming out of the teams. Um, if you are still just that person who really loves what ScriptRunner is capable of, but does not love writing scripts, help is available. Uh, we do have a scripting service, so just wanted to call that out for anyone who would like a leg up or perhaps you're completely inundated. Um, we're here to help. Uh, you get the most out of your tools, not just by providing all the amazing power that Script Running gives you, but to actually help you leverage that as well. We're doing uh, whatever we can and we want to hear from you. So in terms of custom coding, I can think of no better uh, way to illustrate this than uh, a feature highlight for Confluence Cloud, uh, which is custom macros and building whatever you think is missing and whatever it is that your teams are craving on Confluence Cloud. So we have uh, a presentation, I believe, from Jesse to walk us through this and what this looks like. Hi, everyone. My name is Jesse, and I'm the Senior Product Marketing Manager for ScriptRunner for Confluence Cloud. Today, I want to highlight quite a unique feature we have uh, that you may not know about, and that's the custom macro feature where you can actually create your own custom static macros using Groovy on ScriptRunner. This is pretty handy if you've migrated to cloud and you can't find a macro that you need that you had on on-prem, or maybe you just have a very special use case that you can't find a macro for on Marketplace. Well, you can create your own with this. Um, and it saves you the hassle of having to build a Forge app to do it. So we've had customers who've used this feature to create macros that integrate with Jira to display data or macros that users can select from different templates, which then get inserted onto the page. So it's really up to your imagination and your coding ability on what you want to create with this. So I'm going to give you a quick look at what this feature is like on script runner and then some information about a really cool webinar we have at the end of this month on this particular topic so once we're in script runner you can go to the macro section here uh, and to create a custom macro you press this button here create a custom macro and you come to the page where you can write the script for your macro so the first thing you need to do is give your macro a name um, and then a description to explain what the macro does. You, this option, you can enable it or disable it for users to see and use. Um, you can select the body type that can, be in, that can be inserted into the macro, so plain text or rich text or none. Um, you can also select the output type. So block means it sits, the macro sits on its own line. Inline means it's in line with the other content. And this section is where you can put in your macro script and you can also add parameters to so for your users to customize the macro. So we've got uh, a selection here that you can choose from. And once you've filled out all those different fields, you can save the macro. Uh, I'm not gonna do it now, but when you save it, the macro will appear in this main macro section for example, this one is a example of a custom macro. Um, and like I mentioned before, you can enable it or disable it for your users to use. If you are interested in learning more about custom macros, we do actually have a webinar at the end of this month, Creating Custom Cloud Macros 101, where we're going to go more in depth into this topic. So introducing you to the feature, then Bobby, our custom success manager, is going to do a live scripting workshop where he's going to live script two to three macros and talking you through line by line the script and the logic behind it so you can get an idea of how you can build your own custom macro. We'll be also providing the macro code uh, to attendees so you can take that code away and have a play with it, um, give it a try yourself. And of course, there'll be time for questions if you have any. So that is, again, uh, Creating Custom Cloud Macros 101 on Thursday, the 28th of March. 
um, it's going to be at 4 o'clock in the afternoon GMT and it's going to run for 45 minutes. If you're interested, please sign up. Um, we will provide the sign up link in the chat. Thank you. I believe that link is dropping as we speak. And if you are watching this on Catch Up later, all of the links for all of the items that we're talking about will be in the description box. So pop that open, take a peek. It's all in there waiting for you. Um, so that's a great way for us to pull information from JIRA into Confluence. But what about JIRA to JIRA? Hi, everyone. I wonder if maybe Madeline has something to tell us on this. Thanks, Jess. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Madeleine, the product manager for Scriptrunner Connect. Um, and I'm here today to talk to you about a new, some new templates we have in Scriptrunner Connect to help you get started with a Jira to Jira or Jira Cloud to Jira Cloud or Jira on-premise to Jira Cloud um, Sync. Um, next slide, please. So, yeah, actually, we can go to the next one <laughs> directly. Um, so... Why might you want to sync multiple Jira Cloud instances together? Um, I'm sure this looks familiar. Data is often in silos when different teams are working on different instances. Um, so in this organization, the support team is on one Jira Cloud instance, the development team is on one, and the client that they're working with is on a third one. Um, and each of these teams can currently, out of the box, just see the tickets that they create. Um, but what if I want to be able to see all new issues that are created across all three of these instances um, and updates that are made to any of these issues so that I have the most up-to-date information at all times. Um, if you can just move forward on this slide. Thank you. Um, with data synchronization, you have much better data visibility. So in this case, um, and how our template works is that it will pull through any of the issues that are created on any instance to the other two instances, depending on how the sync is set up. Um, so now the support team can see all the work that the development team are, are doing, and they can see a task as it progresses through the different stages. If there's attachments, um, they can leave comments on them that would be then pulled through. And this works across your hierarchy of tickets from epics all the way down to subtasks. Um, next slide, please. We also have, a, there also might be a situation where you um, as a support team are working on a cloud instance of Jira, but your client is still on premise. Um, and in that case, um, you the data is still in silos, but you would still like uh, all new issues to be um, created in both instances as they are created and updated in real time. Um, so next or forward on this slide, please, Jess. Uh, so with our synchronization, you can reach alignment. Um, next slide, please. Before I show you uh, our templates in action, why might you want to sync um, several instances? Why is this important? So obviously for data visibility, uh, different stakeholders can get the most up-to-date information by looking at any, whichever instance that they, they most, um, most regularly work in to make better decisions, uh, to decide on resource allocation and to make sure they're planning strategically. It facilitates cross-team collaboration. Again, each team can stay in their own um, favorite instance while being very aware of what other teams are working on, um, increasing productivity, innovation, and synergy. And finally, it just allows teams to work more efficiently, avoiding duplication um, and minim minimizing wasted effort by reducing any kind of manual work and reducing errors. Um, so yes, I will now show you these two templates. If we move uh, to the next slide, um, I prepared a pre-recorded demo of one of these templates in action. Um, so we'll be demoing, I'll be demoing the Jira on-premise to Jira Cloud template. I will now show you these templates in action. So we are in uh, Scriptrunner Connect in the app. And to find the templates, you simply need to head to the templates tab, filter for one of the applications that you're looking for, in this instance, Jira Cloud, and then scroll uh, to find the one you need. So in our case, we're looking at these two, sync Jira Cloud project with Jira on-premise project or sync multiple Jira Cloud projects. For this demo, I will show you the Jira Cloud to Jira on-premise. Once you click on the template, you're taken to a read-only view um, with a README, which shows you exactly which fields will be migrated between the two instances, um, gives you some useful setup tips and tricks, for example, adding a mandatory epic name to your cloud instance to make sure that 
It matches the epic name and summary structure of epics in Jira on premise, some usage um, notifications, some known limitations, and a few disclaimers. Um, so usually to get started, you would create a workspace from here. But in this, for this demo, I've already set it up just to save us a little time. Setting up the event listeners can take a couple minutes because um, there's quite a few of them. So I will just jump to my prepared workspace now. So in this case, I'm using my sync multiple Jira uh, projects one. Um, and you can see here in the values one, I've updated the projects to match my uh, use case. So in this use case, Acme Corporation is the client and they operate with a Jira on-prem instance and uh, our product support team is using a cloud instance um, called product support. So I'm going to go and create a new support ticket as uh, the client. So we found a new bug, um, support ticket number four. Um, I'll leave myself as the reporter uh, and I'll just write a description. We found a bug on the connectors screen. Ideally, you didn't include more content and then I'll just click create. Then if we head back to script on a connect, we can see that something is being, that there was a trigger. Um, so a ticket was created. And we continue to get some feedback and we get the feedback that um, an issue was created correctly. So I will now head to my product support um, refresh and we should have a new issue which has appeared here. So uh, support ticket number four and you can see that it's been connected. Um, we can see which issue it relates to in your Acme Corporation project. So now that the support team has received um, this support ticket, Sorry, that was the wrong one. Uh, here, yeah, AC15. Um, they like to categorize uh, tickets into epics, so we'll add a parent. Um, we have one here for all March support tickets, so I will add it here. Um, and you can see, uh, if we go back to Script Runner Connect, that the triggers have been um, set. And if I go here, back to my, and we refresh, uh, back to support ticket number four, the epic link has correctly been added here. Let's make a few other updates just to see this working in action. Um, so the support um, team could leave a comment saying, thank you for raising this ticket. Um, we are currently investigating it. Um, could you please attach any useful screenshots. Okay. They will also move this ticket to in progress because someone is uh, looking into it. Um, they could assign it to someone. So uh, let's assign it to this other person in my team. Um, they can add a label. Let's just use one of these testing label. Um, and now if I go back to script runner, you can see all of the scripts executions being finished. So let's go back to um, Acme Corporation and see if these changes have come through. So you can see the label was added. You can see it was assigned to a certain user. You can see the comments come through. Um, so just to wrap things up, I'll show you that it also pulls through uh, attachments. Um, so here you can uh, browse. Let's just use this screenshot that I have. Um, and it's correctly attached. And now let's head back to uh, our Jira Cloud instance, and we should see the attachment come through here. So that's it. Um, this is totally configurable. If there are certain fields you want to add or remove, that is that is doable. This is just a really solid base to get started, and you should be able to get started in a few minutes um, thanks to these templates. That is going to be so useful for people who are running federated environments, for our host server end of life setup, if you're running like dual instances, game changer, amazing. Uh, Maddie, was there anything you wanted to say to cap this off? No, thank you. No, that was it. Thank you. Oh, awesome. All good. Thank you. That was a great demo. And um, if you do want to find out more, then you can head to scriptrunnerconnect.com. There is a very generous free tier if you have not had a chance to play with this yet. As you can see, there's some powerful stuff um, that you can get to grips with. So. I think there's uh, some exciting stuff happening on Jira Data Center in terms of connecting plugin to plugin, maybe doing some more interesting stuff here. Veritate, do you want to talk about this? 
Thank you, Jess. So, yeah, a final update from Scriptrunner for Jira Data Center. So, at Lassin App Creators, get Scriptrunner compatible custom fields. Next slide, please. Thank you. So, we know that you have other apps in your tech stack. We're not offended, it's fine. Um, including some apps that things that you can do things that we can't. So, we've created a new API for these apps to connect into Scriptrunner with. And uh, with these app vendors, when these app vendors connect with us, they'll be able to make their custom fields work with our behavior feature in real time. So for our customers, you won't have to do anything. You'll be able to automate your custom fields as if they were standard Jira custom fields. And the only thing holding you back is the vendor's one-off setup. We've made the installation process for Vendors API a simple setup. And first to make their custom fields behavior compatible was Checklist for Jira from Occupier, who kindly said that they believe this new feature will considerably improve what customers can do uh, with both the apps installed, which is great. Um, and if your favorite app vendor is not participating yet, then let them know that this API exists um, and then that you'd love to be able to use their custom fields in your automation flow. And that's it. Back to you, Jess. Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. Yeah, go and pester your favorite vendors. We want to we wanna play nice. Uh, and one final update about our website from Lisa. Hi, everyone. I'm Lisa, Content Marketing Manager for Scriptrunner. Today, I have a very exclusive sneak peek for you. This has only been shared internally, so you are absolutely the first to see it. Although this demo has been pre-recorded, I am live in the chat right now. So if you have any questions, please ask away and I'll do my best to answer them. So we have a section on our website. If you go to latest and product updates, um, you can see each of our products here. They all have their own dedicated product updates hub. So here you can take a look at updates and features and all that good stuff. So we've been busy giving this page a bit of a makeover. So today I'd like to share with you our brand new product update hub. So from here, you can see we have all of our product updates are now pulling into this one central feed. We have these individual cards for each update and you can see we've got tags here for products, for hosting and for the update type. We've got the date it was posted, and we've also got the version number here, so you can easily find the corresponding release notes if you want to take a look at some of the more technical details of these updates. On the left-hand side here, you'll see we've got some filters. So these can be shown as they are now, or we can hide these. Um, you can then choose from these filters, and you can alter the feed to just display the stuff that you're interested in looking at. So for example, you can choose Script Runner for Jira as a product, and it's gonna just show here the Script Runner for Jira updates. You can then choose Cloud as your hosting option, and you're only gonna see Script Runner for Jira Cloud updates. And say, for example, you had Script Runner for Jira and Script Runner for Confluence, on data center, and you wanted to see the updates for both of those products, you can choose both of them here and your hosting option, and the filter is going to do its thing over here. We've also got the option to filter by publish date here, uh, which means if you've maybe not checked the update hub for a few weeks, you can filter by date and just see the updates that have come in since you last visited. You'll notice that some of these update cards have a read more button and some of these don't. That's simply because some of the updates like this increased script timeout limit are very short and we don't necessarily have a lot to say about it. So we'll keep those nice and short for you. Um, but the others um, like this automating your assets in automation for Jira update does have a read more button because we've got a bit more to say about that one. So if we click through into this one, you can see the update itself here. So we've got all this good information at the top um, that you could see in the update card. And we've got some text information here, but we also have the option to add images. We can add screenshots um, to show the, the new update. And we've also got the, the option to add videos in here as well. And we have a related content section as well. So we can add things like a link to this documentation. 
The new product update hub is launching very soon. I can't say exactly when, uh, but if you keep an eye on our socials, you will definitely see the launch on there. So thank you for listening. And if you have any questions about the new product update hub, I'll be in the chat and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Hey, but thanks Lisa for sharing that. And it's a really great place for you guys to go and get information between these sessions so you can kind of see what's happening and what's coming out and take advantage of it as soon as possible when it hits uh, it hits this section of the site. I think that wraps out our show. Um, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you to all of the presenters. We have come in slightly under time. So if you want to go and tell your line manager that this took to the full time, if you want to tell them that we overran so that you can have some peace and quiet to build more automations, we won't tell. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again in June.